Yo, yo, it's Weefle with the Scroll Screen. Pow! Welcome back. So then, let's take a look at this new USO footage uploaded by Jeremy Corbell. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Is he out to con the UFO community and the world at large with his new USO footage? I believe he is. I think he's just doing this for the exposure while knowing how damaging this is to real UFO research. So he really doesn't care as long as he's getting the clicks and the attention. This guy has gone mainstream worldwide with his last two videos claiming he is showing us real footage of UFOs filmed and leaked by the Navy. But let's get one thing straight. Yes, these are actual videos filmed by the Navy, but are they really showing us UFOs? The first video of the Triangle Craft a month or so back filmed in night vision has already been debunked by a ufologist named Mick West. But... Mick isn't getting the exposure like he should, not compared to Jeremy while the world is in awe with Jeremy's videos. Before I go on and tell you why I think the new USO footage is a bit fishy, let's take a look at an interview with Mick by the New York Post as a quick breakdown debunking Jeremy's first triangle sighting. You can find Mick on YouTube, there's a video he's done of a proper analysis on that triangle UFO sighting. You can find that link in this video's description. So let's jump right into it. So um, a little over a week ago, uh, filmmaker, UFO believer, Jeremy Corbell posted, you know, to his social media, this green night vision footage mm -hmm. of a triangle, the story behind that was claimed behind it was that it was these pyramid shaped UFOs flying over the US Navy. And of course, it went worldwide, super viral. You looked into it. What did you find? Well, the first thing I noticed about it was the flashing. And you, if you look at the video, you see it's kind of flashing. And it's not flashing at a regular rate. It's kind of like irregular. Uh, but it really reminded me of the flashing lights of a plane. And yeah, I looked into that, and I found there are actually some planes that have a sequence of lights that flashes just like that. There's a long uh, sequence overlaid, a short sequence. So I looked at the video and thought, aha, that's a plane. Yeah, and it's probably it's probably safe to say that if it was an intergalactic spacecraft, it wouldn't be carrying lights that are FAA compliant, right? <laughs> yes, uh, but you would think an alien spaceship wouldn't want to uh, be seen. But what we've got to go here with here is the simplest explanation. And really the simplest explanation is that just a plane, it moves like a plane, it acts like a plane. You can even go in and you can calculate how fast it's moving. If you assume it's a plane at 33,000 feet, you can calculate its angular velocity uh, from, the, from the information that, that's available with the positions of the stars. And you can see it's a bit less than one degree per second, which translates to about 400 to 450 knots which is the exact same speed that the planes in that region were flying uh, at that time. That's the speed that they fly over that area going towards Los Angeles. So in every way, it matches a plane. And then from there, I thought, well, if it's a plane, how can it be triangular? And you know, what immediately leapt out to me there was that uh, there are other things in the video that are also triangular. Towards the end of the video, there's two lights which are uh, triangle shaped. So I thought, you know, you see this type of thing when a video is out of focus. You often see the lights in the background take on the shape of the aperture of the camera, like the, the shape of the, the, the iris in the camera. And some cameras have a triangular iris. And so if that happens, if you have a camera that's a bit out of focus, it's got a triangular iris, then you're going to get these triangular shapes. And these are called uh, bokeh. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a well-known thing in, in photography. And then I looked into it a little bit more and uh, I kind of analyzed exactly what was going on. And I found that these two lights that were in the scene were actually two stars. And you can, you can see that by kind of tracing from the start of the video. Because at the start of the video, it shows a little constellation uh, which you can identify as being Jupiter and uh, Actaris, I think, and a few other stars fits perfectly. You take that setting and then you kind of follow the camera as it moves around. And where it ends up is these two stars uh, called Ocab and Ocab Borealis. They're just two fairly ordinary innocuous stars. And once you know where that is, and you know that those actually are stars, the fact that they're stars that appear as triangles means that the moving flashing thing that appears as a triangle isn't actually a triangle, it's a point of light or a couple of points of light, just like the stars. And obviously the most likely thing at that point is that it's a plane. 
So, now let's take a look at this new USO footage. If you watch closely, Jeremy is focused on recording this footage from either a phone or a camera and is recording the footage as it plays on his PC. Why not release the actual file instead? I will play the full video at the end so you can fit all of these pieces together. Why he never just uploaded the footage in the first place is because it contained technical information, including the date, time, etc. If Jeremy uploaded that footage, the con would have failed there and then. So Jeremy opted to record a digital file on his phone camera as it played out on his monitor. This way, Jeremy could aim his focus to zoom in enough to omit this information, but why? The footage itself has been chopped up and slowed down and the audio re-recorded to match. But why? If you look closely at the timestamp at the bottom right, focus on the seconds counter and notice how slow the counter is moving, proving the video file has been slowed down and manipulated. So how can the audio still be playing in real time? It's not. It's been relayed over this manipulated camera version. Also, the timestamp on the video all of a sudden jumps 7 minutes from 5.53am to 6am in the blink of an eye. The audio itself is very revealing too as launch kilo ASAP can clearly be heard. This indicates that the Navy had previously launched projectiles and were attempting to fire again. What does this tell us? Well, the simple explanation is that the Navy were conducting exercises which involved multiple projectiles being launched and tracked. So what was this in the video? It has to be a UFO, right? I believe what we are seeing in this video is something the Navy uses called the Killer Tomato. The Killer Tomato is designed by APPF Incorporated and is a naval gunnery target balloon used on calm to moderate seas. This military target was created to withstand machine gun fire and the waves of the ocean. No matter what you or mother nature throws at this Killer Tomato, it keeps standing upright, making it the ideal target for heavy duty artillery. Once it's inflated with air, the Killer Tomato is a large self-filling integrated skirt that holds the target in place on the sea surface. So I believe this is proof Mr. Corbell manipulated and fabricated this footage. So despite his feeble attempts to shield this information from view, it can still be seen in the form of timestamps at the bottom right of the screen. Watch the footage in a minute and watch how Jeremy is actually focused on ensuring that this information stays just out of frame. So I think Jeremy wants his name to be remembered as one of the best ufologists of this time. In fact, it's going to backfire and be known as one of the world's biggest hoaxes in the UFO field. Ouch. Why not just release the full, unmanipulated raw file? Because I believe he's deliberately trying to fool you. Well that's it for today, I hate debunking stuff but I felt like this one really, really needed to be addressed. And as always my friends, I will catch you soon. Legends, Reefa Sorry Me Wrong. Frank Omaha, Pickney Kid, Rocco Pearl's the pass ability to launch Hilo ASAP. It's flashing your bearing on you. Got your wings three knots. Keep going, bro. We're making tents. We could probably bring that 35 rounds. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll bring it down. We got some, a lot of white water out there, some six foot swells. Well, it's getting close. <laughs> Yeah, we have a uh, 31 knots sustained wind, top side, gust of 40. What was splashed? Splashed. Mark bearing and range.